Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to the Three Crosses Farrier Company. I'm Caleb, and I want to wish everybody a Happy New Year. I took a little break over the holidays, and this is the first video for the new year. And I can't think of a better video to start with. This was a really, really high abscess. Initially, we didn't know that. We started out by kind of cleaning out the hoof, seeing if there's anything initially wrong like maybe a rock or, or a nail or even a twig that's shoved up and causing pain didn't find anything i'm going to run my hoof testers i had kind of an idea it might be in the heel and right there i got a reaction so that gives me a pretty good idea that it's probably in the heel i'm going to do a little more work with my knife and see if see if i can isolate it a little more A lot of times abscesses, especially this time of year with the mud and everything, they're pretty common. You usually find them along the lamini wall, but specifically they're, they're right in the bars a lot of times, or, or sometimes they're right under that frog in the back. You can see he's got a little bit of thrush in the commissures, that black gooey stuff coming out of there. So throughout the video, I left a lot of the audio in. I want you guys to kind of see my, my thought process because I'm kind of looking to see what I can find. I'm testing the frog to see if there's it might be super high. pain. Mm -hmm. And like I commented there, I thought maybe it might be high. Turns out that's actually the case. Oh, it was muddy, really high. Muddy conditions, it's that time of year. He's in what condition? Muddy conditions. Muddy conditions, yeah. yes. It's yes. just, they're just not, I think that's it. So I start digging up through the hoof wall, and there's there's kind of a an old injury, like a weak point in the hoof, and I have a feeling that it's sitting up there. A lot of pressure when you're under a horse and the owner's watching. I'm using my loop knife there. I really like this loop knife for getting into those kind of tighter places where I don't want to open the whole sole up. Does a stone call that cause that or just some mud? Oh, it could be. I think in this case it's mud. A lot of folks have commented in a couple other videos, well, how could an owner let a horse get this way? This is just part of owning horses. This gal takes such good care of her horse, she dotes on him. You can hear her in the video. You can see that little black line I'm kind of following up, and I'm pretty sure that's where, at this point in the video, I was pretty sure that's where the abscess was, that's where it had that's how it had traveled up into the heel and then caused him pain. Well, we're, we're staying in the hoof wall because that's probably where. Okay, give him a break. One of the things is, is our goal is to get the abscess, but our goal is not to compromise the whole hoof capsule. And part, part of the way we do this is knowing our anatomy. Where I'm digging is what they call a stratum medium. There's portions of the hoof wall, stratum externum, and right where I'm digging is, is right on the edge of the stratum medium going into live tissue. So I just trimmed him to get some of that excess hoof wall out of the way so I could work a little better. Abscesses are super rewarding, but they can also be frustrating because you you have to be you're kind of you're you're going slow trying to figure out where it is because you don't want to compromise any more hoof wall than you have to. 
again you can kind of see that track running right up that heel and i'm kind of following it up to see if i can find the pocket you'll notice i'm using a couple of different knives this is a jh forge uh, it's a little bit narrower so i'm using that one to to kind of dig in tighter open that heel up just a little more so I can get a knife in there easier. You can see my hands, man. I just tore the heck out of my hands this particular week. I had that, I just got rid of that big old nasty thumbnail. Whacked it pretty good with a hammer. It is not easy to be in this position. I'm holding him low. So I'm checking here. I'm just double checking. I kind of, I, I dig a little bit, I test. I just want to make sure I'm going in the right direction. And I check the frog to make sure that maybe we're not getting a reaction because we're close to something else that's also sensitive. And he's being fairly reactive in one spot, nowhere else. Sometimes also I use those, sometimes if I squeeze, it'll pop. If I've gotten close enough, kind of like a pimple. Uh, in this case, that one, it, it just didn't quite want to come with, with a little bit of squeezing. Again, trying to follow that track. You can't really see it right here in this video, but there's like a flakiness right up that edge of that hoof wall. Going to use my loop knife a little more. I had a guy filming for me on this particular day, so I apologize because uh, it's a it's a little jerky. Um, what happens is is a lot of times when I'm doing something, whoever's running the camera gets to watching what I'm doing, and you have to make sure you watch through the camera of the phone, otherwise you don't remember to move the camera. Um, and we all do it. It's just, it's just hard. So I apologize because this video is a little, there's a little bit of, uh, so I switched tacks here. I didn't really want to dig out a ton more hoof wall. So I, I'm using a nail to kind of follow that flaky chalky track up because the idea is to be as least invasive as we can. And you can see that hole developing right there. And it's just, it's just flaky hoof it's dead hoof which is probably how this abscess started um, you know dirt and gravel got packed in had kind of an infection it traveled up the hoof wall and it finally traveled up high enough to get into some live tissue the purple stuff is groom's hand thrush solution um, that's what i used for thrush treatment and uh, anything antibacterial in the hoof. I like it, it comes in an aerosol can with a hoof pick. This was quite a process, I mean, we spent uh, Close to 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half hour finding this abscess. I've edited out a couple of the, where I had to stand up and give my back a break. People don't understand that abscess come on super quick. This or in particular case, he was fine the night before and lame super lame the next morning so she called me in a panic i told her give me an hour we'll meet at my place and we'll see if we can't figure it out
So he does need to be in the house now. Basically. <laughs> needs bubble wrap. Huh? He needs bubble wrap. Again, gonna start using my nail again, kind of digging out that chalky dead hoof. And you can see the old injury right there, just above my sleeve cuff, you can kind of see an indent in the hoof wall. That's an old injury. Something happened to the coronary band and it's caused that hoof wall to be weak in that area. Just get a little. Getting pretty far up there with the nail and, and you can't really see it from the bottom, but I'm getting pretty close to the coronary band at this point. So right there I'm pushing on the nail to see if I can if I can I know I'm right there. I know the abscess because of anatomy, I know the abscess has got to be right there. And so I'm trying to to just pop it. But you don't want to hit live tissue and bleed him, you just want to hit the abscess. And he's definitely reactive. I felt it pop. I happen to love these new hats. You'll see it right there in the video for a second. They've got a magnet on it, and I carry my nails on it now. They're made by Badger Built. I know, I know, buddy. I know. We're right there, buddy. Again, I'm just pushing up there trying to just... I'm going to open it up a little bit more with my hoof knife, see if I can't get a little bit higher. My nippers a little bit. Looking. Yep, that brown stuff. Oh, stuff. oh, oh, yeah, now I see it, honey. There we go. It's amazing to me. Uh, abscesses are like so satisfying when you finally get them. I get anxiety watching that. Like I know it's right there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find it. And it's right there. But you know, it. Like it's so. That one in particular was so high. I was like, God, it's got to be right here. And I just. Couldn't quite find it. It just wasn't popping. So satisfying when it let loose. We just want to keep this nice and clean. So right here, I'm just putting some gauze in. I'm packing that hole. The gauze allows that hole to drain, but it also keeps it clean and disinfected. And then when she got home, she took him and put him in an Epsom salt bath to help draw the rest of that pus and uh, infection out. We wouldn't mind that little bugger. Usually I have a little more vet wrap. That's why I'm using this particular tape. Oh, got a little aggressive with my pole there. <laughs> I like to use a full roll of, of vet wrap and I only had a half. Just a couple. I have more of that. 
Oh, we got plenty here. I'm just gonna create a nice little. Oop, there we go. Stick and stick. This stuff comes off harder than duct tape. Mm -hmm. Some people use like a diaper. But I prefer to use gauze and and uh, vet wrap and duct tape, okay. just because I don't have diapers. Basically a diaper. Mm -hmm. It what? It yeah. creates a diaper. Mm -hmm. Just keep the foot nice and protected while it heals. When Tank walked up, unfortunately, I didn't get any videos. He was hobbling. He wouldn't even put any weight on this on this leg. There we go. He is walking so much better now. I mean, it's night and day, and in a day he was completely sound. Check out part two. We're gonna shoe that back leg and show you what we do in this case. Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you for the support and the love you've shown this channel. Here's to a great New Year. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.